So let's go through this complex uh, centroid example. Uh, remember, every complex shape we deal with is really just a bunch of simple shapes um, put together. So here we have this, and, and you're going to see all the work at once because I've already worked it out, but at least wanted to talk you through it. So we had this, uh, this kind of awkward shape here, and I tried to shade in the area that is, that is the shape. So you have a larger square, which is kind of outlined in blue, but out of that we've cut a semicircle here out of the corner, and we've cut a triangle off the corner. And it's not perfectly to scale, but um, the, the square itself is three inches by three inches, uh, the triangle here is one inch by one inch on a side, and the semicircle has a diameter of one and a half inches. Uh, and it's located in the top corner, this guy's in this corner. So um, I color coordinated this to try to keep track of everything. So the, everything with the square is in blue, everything with the uh, triangle is purple or fuchsia or pink, whatever you want to call it, and everything with the semicircles in red. So first things first, let's deal with the simple shapes. So I see the square, the larger square. I'm going to deal with the sub, do the subtractive method here, whereas um, I start with a larger shape and I just cut bits out of it. That is the easiest way to approach this one. There's not really a good way to do um, an additive approach here. You can, but it'd be more annoying, let's say. Um, so I like to set up a table where I have my areas, uh, my shapes are in different rows. I have my x coordinates, my y coordinates. Um, it doesn't matter how you set this up, but I would suggest, highly, highly suggest, organizing your work very carefully because there's a lot of numbers to deal with here. So, um, so for the first one, for shape one, our three by three square, um, this is symmetrical, so the centroid should be right in the middle. Um, so it should be, if it's three by three on a side, it's three and a half, or one and a half by one and a half. Um, half the base, half the height, which we did down here. So if the base and height are each three inches, we get one and a half inches on the side, right there, smack dab in the middle. Um, now the area is uh, side squared, it's, in, it's a square, so uh, square the sides, nine inches squared. All right, so, so far so good. We're done with the basic information for our square. Um, now the second one we did, I did the triangle first. The order doesn't really matter here, but I just went to that one next. Um, so for my shape two, everything's in purple. Um, each side is one and one. The area is half the base times the height. So half times one times one, uh, which will give you half. So a half of, an, half of an inch squared is the area of this guy. Plug that right in there. Now, I made it negative because this shape, this triangle, isn't actually there. It's cut out. So really, in the quote unquote, the vote for where the centroid is going to be, this corner doesn't really get a vote because it's not actually there. We're going to actually take that away from the square that we're actually using, which is why we took the area and made it negative. Um, you treat everything the same way, uh, but just make sure that area is negative if you're using a subtractive method. If there was actually a shape there, there was actually material there, it would stay positive. So, moving on to the centroid location of the triangle. So we have um, for a triangle, it's always base over three, um, a third of the base and a third of the height. But if we do that, that's going to put the centroid, it should be right in the middle, not exactly in the middle, but inside the triangle here. A third of the base, a third of the height. So that's measuring from this corner, measuring from this nice little 90 degree angle over here. So if we do that, we get a, a third of that is, well, one inch, so it's a third of an inch and a third of an inch from this corner. But we have to measure from the same position for all of these shapes. And usually it's in the bottom left, kind of traditionally. We set up our y-axis this way, our x-axis this way, um, if it's convenient for us. So if this is a third of an inch, I need actually this distance um, all the way out from the left-hand side to where that centroid is. So what I do is I take the the side itself, the total, which is three inches wide, and I subtract the third of an inch that would be here. That leaves me with what would be left. So for my x coordinate over here on the right, um, I have three minus the base, the third of the base. So three minus a third, or two and two thirds, 2.6 repeating. Um, the y coordinate is a little simpler because we're just measuring straight up. So that would be one third of an inch. All right, so I got the Triangle now taken care of. Two and two thirds of an inch all the way over, one third of an inch up. I have the xy coordinates for that centroid. So now we got to deal with the semicircle up here, um, and I'll get to 
this equation a little bit later. We want to deal with the simple stuff first. So we moved on and focusing on the semicircle up here, same shape. So if we want the semicircle, it's half of a regular circle. So the area is going to be pi r squared divided by 2. So one half of a regular area of a circle. Um, now, the dimension we got was across the entire thing, or the diameter. So it's one and a half inches. So I want to take half of that, the radius. Uh, half the diameter is the radius. So it's 0.75 inches. Square that times pi divided by 2. You should get to something like 0.883125. Um, I tend not to round in the middle, just to make sure my numbers don't get thrown off. Because as you calculate several times, if you round in the middle, um, you get farther and farther away from what the answer should be. So if you're keeping things in your calculator, keep it in there. Um, now, once you get down to 7, 8, 9 digits, is it going to make a huge difference? No, but if it's uh, 4, 5, or 6, I tend to keep it. Anyways, um, so let's get to that centroid location. So where is this located compared to our origin down here in the corner? Um, so for the x location, for the x coordinate, looking left to right, um, our semicircle here is oriented so that it's symmetrical. So really that x, that x coordinate is going to be right smack dab in the middle of that semicircle. So if the diameter is one and a half inches, half of that is going to be 0.75 inches, and that's this distance right here. So that should be d over 2, 1.5 over 2, 0.75 inches. So we're, this is 0.75 inches across right here. The trickier part is the y-coordinate. So when we're looking at y-coordinate here, as in how far up the centroid is going to be, um, for a centroid, that coordinate, or this distance away from the base of the semicircle, which is actually our base is at the top here, is 4r over 3 pi. So if we do 4r over 3 pi, our radius was 0.75, we get 0.3185 inches. But that is the distance to the base of the semicircle, which is the top of our shape right here. So that gives me this little short distance right here. But I'm measuring from the bottom. So just like we did before with the triangle, I need to take the full 3 inches and subtract the distance this is from the base so that I get this distance to the bottom of the shape, um, which is my y coordinate. So I get 3 minus 4r over 3 pi, 3 minus 0.3185, which gives me 2.6815 inches. All right, so now um, I went back and I filled in my information here. Um, I have all of the information I need, all of the basic information I need, and now I just need to start calculating stuff. So if I go back over here, the equation we're dealing with is the sum of all of the x-coordinates times the areas divided by the total area, which means I have three shapes here. So I have x1, a1, plus x2, a2, plus x3, a3, all divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3, the total area. Right? Now, you can calculate these individually if you want to and give a whole separate table of what's x1, a1, that's a certain number, x2, a2, that's a certain number if you want to do it that way. Um, I just expanded the equation and I just plugged my numbers in directly and I did it that way. Uh, whatever floats your boat, whatever is, makes more sense to you is easier to organize for you. So, from using the information I got from my table, and I wish these were on the same screen, but they're not, so we'll deal with it. Uh, this is one and a half times nine, and then the second one is 2.67 times 0.5, and negative 0.5, don't forget that negative, because that shape's not actually there. Uh, 0.75 times 0.883125, um, a negative as well. So if you do the math for all this, plugging everything in, diligently keeping it neat, um, you get some numbers that look like these down here. Uh, and again, pay attention to the negative signs, you're subtracting area, you're not actually adding area, since the, those shapes aren't actually there. And you get something like 1.68 inches. And I hope I didn't make a mistake. And if you did, you can point it out and point and laugh at me um, all you wish. So that's our x coordinate, our weighted average. So we do the same thing for the y coordinate. I, I expanded the equation again y1a1, y2a2, y3a3. Um, plug in my numbers, negative areas. Uh, I didn't bother to plug in this again because the total area was the same, so I pulled that from the previous slide. Uh, we get these numbers, and then adding them up, uh, we get these numbers, and we get 1.44 inches. So my centroid coordinates from the very bottom left of that, that uh, shape, 1.44 inches up and 1.68 inches 
over, which is close to the center, but not quite. So remember, as you're doing this, this whole equation is basically taking a weighted average of where these um, locate where these centroids are. So the larger the area the area is, the the larger vote it's going to get. Um, so the the square here had the largest area, so it gets the largest vote. The um, triangle had the smallest area, it gets the smallest vote. It influences the location less than the other shapes would. Um, but since we're dividing by the total area, it's kind of like percentages. You can basically look at this if you really wanted to break it down. The shape gets a certain percentage of the vote, this one gets a certain percentage, this one gets a certain percentage, and if you divide all that out, add them all up, you get a certain specific location for that. Um, but the name of the game here is organization. Make your tables, find your centroids, find your areas, use that information, um, expand, out your, expand out your equation here if you want to, or make a separate table for your x1a1, your x2a2, your x3a3, um, and crank it out to the end. Good luck.